Well, good morning. Pastor Steve here again, Dr. Steve. Here I am in my library on my hammock, and uh, we're having some time in the presence of God, and we're learning about prayer, devotional life, being connected to, to our Creator, having a supernatural experience, uh, experiencing abundant life, and how we connect in and engage into these things through a, a personal devotional life. And this morning I might do something slightly different. Um, I have uh, did a study of uh, forgiveness today, and I think it's a really powerful key for us entering into the presence of God in worship, in prayer, and receiving revelation and understanding and freedom and insight from our wonderful Father. So I'm just going to show you some of the verses I looked through. And, and as I went through those verses today, I really felt like the Spirit of God was speaking to my heart. And I really got challenged and got encouraged and, and got a, a, a greater level of freedom to uh, live with, it, with, with my Creator, with God, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit through opening my heart up to forgive others. So I'll just show you very briefly the verses that I looked at today. It was Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 18, 1 Corinthians 13, Matthew 18 again, Galatians 5, and 2 Peter chapter 3. Now, I'm not sure if we'll get through all of those verses today, but um, if you get a chance yourself, you can read and look at them along the lines of, of what I'm sharing. So let's just jump into it straight away and, and be encouraged by what God's got to say to us. So let's start out to, at the beginning and have a look at the Passion Translation, one of my favorite Bibles. And, and this is the Passion Translation here. And uh, there's the front of the Passion tra Translation there. And uh, we're looking at Matthew uh, chapter 6. So we're going to jump through to, to the book of Matthew. We're going to jump through to, to chapter 6. And we're going to just dive into some things today that uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about starting off with the Lord's Prayer. We have a look at the way Jesus taught us to pray. And uh, let's, let's have a look what it says there in Matthew chapter 6. And let's, let's jump into verse 5 and see what it says. We don't want to be pretenders. It jumps in there and talks about not being pretenders, uh, faking prayer. I don't want to ever fake my relationship with God, especially when I'm spending time with him. I, I don't want to waste a moment. I want to be in his presence, experiencing his power. And I don't want anything stopping that. So let's have a look at how we can ad adventure into this today. Then let's ju just jump into the next verse there and, and have a look. It says, but whenever you pray, Go into your innermost chamber. Be alone with Father God, praying to him in secret. What an amazing thing. If you can be alone with him and talk to him and pray. Whenever you pray, be alone with him. It's not a show. We're not being fake. We're opening our heart. And our whole goal is to connect to his source of power. And so let's continue on and see what Jesus starts to teach. It goes down to the bottom there and says, um, let's have a look at verse 8. There is no need to imitate them, the fakers, since your father already knows what you need before you ask him. Pray like this. Jesus said there's no need to, to copy the fakers. <laughs> there's no, no need to copy anyone in prayer. We don't, we don't need to copy. We, we open up with our own heart. And uh, we just want to make sure we have an open heart when we open up to God. So forgiveness, obviously, is one of the key areas of having an open heart with God in our relationship. So let's continue. He said, pray this way. Jesus said, our Father, dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name. Let's continue here. Let the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. And so this is an amazing thing that our lives are centered around his name, around his nature, his character. And as we spend time alone with the Father in that place of prayer and intimacy, connection with the Holy Spirit, we start to open up and we become more like him. So let's continue to see what he's like. Jesus teaches us, he says, let the be the center on which our lives turn. Manifest your kingdom realm. And cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is fulfilled in heaven. Did you see that? Cause every one of your purposes to be fulfilled. 
man, God can do some amazing things. So this prayer, Jesus is teaching us how to, how to engage our Father, our source, our wonderful God in our personal, intimate devotional time. This is not a public prayer. This is our personal, intimate, alone time with God how to engage him and what to expect when we do engage him to manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth. So God's good purposes will be fulfilled. Let's see how forgiveness brings the key to that. Jesus goes along and keeps continuing to say, we acknowledge you as our provider. Yes, he's the provider of all things that we need. Let's not stop him from providing for us. Let's continue on. As a provider of all that we need each day, forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. And the word for wrongs there is sin or debts. So forgive us as we forgive those. And so there's a key here in terms of of knowing God's heart because Jesus taught us to pray this way and pray according to God's will. So forgive us as we forgive others. So there's a flow of forgiveness that can come to us as we're forgiving others. We're not stopping that flow of forgiveness as we release and open up and let go to forgive others. So let's see how this all works together. So we're looking there, verse 13, rescue us every time we face tribulation or problems and set us free from evil. Set us free is a powerful phrase there because we have the ability to set others free. We have the ability to receive God's freedom through our forgiveness. Let's keep continuing here. For you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. Amen. And so what we see there is Jesus is pointing out a few definitions and things, but we've got to understand that God is in control. Jesus understood the father had all authority, all control, all dominion. But there are these phrases in there like forgive, uh, forgive us as we forgive others and petitioning God to manifest. So we're seeing here in our own personal time that we have the ability to unlock things from heaven, but it's all related to our intimate personal relationship with Father, the petitions of our heart, the requests we make. But what attitude is in our heart when we are praying these things? Well, we see the, the crucial context of this in the next few verses because Jesus goes on in verse 14. And when you pray, make sure you forgive the faults of others so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. Did you hear that? So that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. I believe the rendering of that is that your Father in heaven is being given freedom to release what he wants to release. See, the Father wants to release everyone. He wants to free everyone. And as we forgive others, it gives God the freedom and the ability to set us free. So let's continue. He goes on to say, but if you withhold forgiveness, oh my, did you see that? If you withhold, if you hold back, if you take hold of and you don't let forgiveness go, you're falling into a trap. I'm falling into a trap. And it is the fact that if you withhold forgiveness from others, your father withholds forgiveness from you. Oh my. If you withhold forgiveness from others, your father withholds forgiveness from you. Now, what is this all about? Well, we're going to get into a little deeper today. It's not like God saying, I'm angry at you because you're not forgiving, so I'm not going to forgive you. <laughs> no, there is a principle of releasing and allowing our will to work with God's will so he is released to do what he wants. It's God's will that everybody be forgiven. It's God's will that everybody receive mercy. He is already desiring to pour that out. But even as as we come into his presence and have relationship with him, we can we can cut off our communication with him, revelation, inspiration, the flow of of, of sensing his presence can be cut off when we withhold forgiveness from others because we're stopping him from pouring in his love on us. So as we look at this and as we travel through, we we start to understand that that's holding us back. I'm going to turn now to to Matthew chapter 18 and we're going to look at it in the in the King James version. It's one of my favorite versions as well. Uh, it's the, it's the, it's the version of the Bible that I memorize most of my primary uh, Bible verses in. 
So let's just go and have a quick look at the Spirit Filled Life Bible translation of uh, the New King James Version. There are the, the beginning um, information about that. And so we're going to jump into this and dive into Matthew chapter 18. And we're going to have a look, we're going to have a look briefly now into uh, verse 21 to 35. It's a, it's a wonderful story that Jesus spoke about the unforgiving servant and how this unforgiveness really binds us and holds us and stops God's flow of revelation and goodness and intimacy flowing into our lives. You know, a lot of times we, we come to, to be close with God and have an, an intimate time, maybe in, in worship or reading books in the Bible or, or prayer and study and intimacy, just soaking in the presence of God. But, you know, a lot of times we, we don't feel the presence of God or we don't sense the flow. We don't feel the power. Maybe our prayers are not answered and, we, and we're confused. Like, Why not? <laughs> well, a lot of times it's our own fault. It's our own silliness. It's our own restrictions that are stopping God from flowing and releasing his goodness down to us. So let's see this story and have a look what's happening here. And so we see the parable or well, the story in Matthew chapter 18, we're starting at the parable of the unforgiving servant. And this is a story where Peter came to Jesus one day and asked him, how many times do I have to forgive? <laughs> it's like, it just seems like I keep having to forgive. <laughs> well, if we forgive, we keep the flow of God's mercy, grace, goodness, power, anointing, everything good flowing to us and through us. And the moment we restrict that, we restrict him and we restrict the flow out through us. So let's have a look at this. Then Peter came to Jesus, him, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Do I have to keep forgiving him again and again and again? Seven was a, um, a number of completion. And so up to seven times, you know, a complete number. Jesus said to him in verse 22, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Oh my, that's that's an infinite number. Really, Jesus is not giving a, a legalistic requirement or, or a system there or a mathematical equation. He's just he's simply saying, just don't stop the flow. Don't stop the flow of forgiveness going out to others. Don't stop the flow of God pouring forgiveness into you. Mercy. And as I said, again, there's, there's times we come into his presence, God's presence, and we feel like, what have I done wrong? Have I sinned? Have I been in some sort of, you know, thing in my mind or attitudes? Why don't I feel God? Well, <laughs> it might simply be that you're holding offense or, or unforgiveness against someone out there in the world. And even in my time with God this morning, I, I thought of people that I might have held unforgiveness from. And I felt in this time, God was helping me this morning. And I'm just sharing what he was talking to me about was he was forgiving others, having a heart of mercy and grace and forgiveness. Allow that free flow to come into you. It was just reminding me of the flat fact of keeping the doors open for him to move and for me to love and forgive. So let's continue and see what Jesus is saying. Jesus said to him, I don't say seven times, but 70 times seven. <laughs> Many more than you can think, Peter. It goes on to verse 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Did you hear that? He, it says, he wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And so we look at verse 24. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now that's a lot of money. One talent of gold is a lot of gold, a lot of value in today's worth. And so multi, multiple, multiple, multiple millions of dollars and even more. Uh, and so we have a look at this and we see that, and when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay his master, he commanded that he be sold. And so he wasn't able to pay. He wasn't able to, to, you know, and this is all relating to forgiveness. It's all relating to opening up and forgiving others. But we have a debt. Remember, sit in, in forgive our debts as we forgive others, as forgive our, you know, sins. And so that's a, that's a sim, symbol of, of the things we've done to others and done wrong. But so we can't pay our debt back to God. But we can open up forgiveness and mercy by releasing debts of others. We forgive others and God 
opens the floodgates and forgets us, forgives us instantly. We, we receive what he's already done. He's already forgiven. He's already wanted. He's already setting up the desire to pour out. He's done it through Christ on the cross. And we receive the results of his forgiveness when we forgive others. And so let's keep continuing. Verse 26 uh, verse 20, we'll just stop this, the, the, the next two says, um, Master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. Verse 26, the servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. He was going to be payment be made, that payment must be due. And really, and, and when we look at um, our lives, uh, the, the result of the, the sowing of all the things we've ever done and hurt others and, and thoughts and things, we might think we're perfect, but in actual fact, we are not. And uh, there, are, there are, you know, consequences and things happening, reaping and sowing of all different things that, that we can literally cut off the, the effects of, of all the negatives by allowing God's mercy to take control. And so we don't have to pay anymore. Jesus paid the price on the cross to set us free. So let's continue. And we see the servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. He said, have patience. You watch. God's patience is amazing. Then in verse 27, the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. He forgave him all. Did you see how easily he was moved with compassion? This is talking about the father's heart. Moved with compassion. Forgave him. That's the father's heart towards us. Verse 28. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, which was a very small amount of money compared to even one talent of gold. A hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. And so we're looking at the patience of the person and we're looking also at the compassion and the patience of God. And so we've got to look at the fact that God is far more patient, far more compassionate than us. We never want to cut off his flow of patience and compassion. And so when we look at this, we see in verse 30, and he would not, he would not, what a sad situation. He would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you. All that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers unto, <laughs> until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you <laughs> if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother, his trespasses. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty deep and pretty strong. And so we've got to understand, I can't I haven't got time to go into the depths of this, but we've just got to look at the difference between God's compassion and our compassion, God's mercy, God's forgiveness and our forgiveness. Not only that, the weight of the, of the, of the crimes and the debt and the, the absolute offense against a holy God and, and, and our little crimes and little things against each other. And so God forgave the weight of in infinite separation from him. And so now it, it should, be, should be easy for us to say, well, oh, look what he did. Now I want to do what he did. I want to be like you, Father. Here I am alone in my personal time with you, learning about the difference of equity in value of, of what you forgave me of. The great immense amount and the small amount of me forgiving just another human. And I don't want to stop your flow. So let's just continue on. We're going to have a look at 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5. You want to understand what love really is. 
And we see in First Corinthians, let's let's turn there, and we're we're gonna have a look at thirteen. And we see in verses four and five, love suffers long. And and we know that God is love, so really we can say God. God suffers long and is kind. God loves sorry, God does not um does sorry, God does does not envy. God or love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. And so when we look at this, that the God has the ability to love us infinitely, and we don't have that ability, but we can receive that, we can believe that, thinks no evil. Oh my goodness. And when people have offended us, hurt us, done wrong towards us, ripped us off in business, you I don't know if you had a big brother or, or a big sister or a family member that, that did things to you that were harsh or painful or, or a little sister or a little brother that were annoying <laughs> or people in the kingdom of God that have got certain personality types that sort of grate on you or, you know, you might be a party person that's a sanguine, that's a fun-loving, peacock-type personality that is just excited and and uh, energized and energetic and out there. And you might have a friend who is, or a brother or sister who is more of a owl, melancholy, detailed. And, and because of your different personalities, <laughs> there's, a, there's friction that happens. But we've got to learn to think no evil. Don't allow this mind to trap us. Hold us bound. And that brings us back to the beginning of the story. And when we look back at Matthew, uh, we'll go back to Matthew 18. And um, hopefully this is, we're going to see something from this that will jump out to us. And we look there, we were reading just just then the whole story of the parable of the unforgiving servant. And uh, you may have heard it preached many times or spoken many times or taught many times that, that um, man, that guy came and the king forgave him, the ruler forgave him of such a massive amount. But then he went off and couldn't forgive his uh, friend or brother of such a small amount and he was put into prison because of it. What is this prison that is spoken of here? Well, let's go a few verses up from that and let's have a look just before that at what Matthew 18 verses 18 and 19 is speaking about because it has direct reflection and it's a direct um, indication of what this verse is talking, these verses are talking about. It says there, talking about maybe prayer or relationship with God. Assuredly, I say to you, Jesus speaking, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, this is the amazing prayer scripture everybody talks about, binding and loosing. We have the ability to bind the devil and loose the devil. Well, really, it's, it's talking what you allow and what you disallow what you agree with, what you don't agree with, what you what your mindsets allow. You know, there's so many things. That, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. And so there. Are, this is all relating to our prayers being answered, to having relationship with others, to be in agreement, in unity. And this this verse is really showing us uh, just before we get into that story about the un, unpardoned, unpardoned, un, unforgiving servant, the parable of the unforgiving servant. It's showing us uh, a perspective just a few verses before we jump into there. What it's talking about is about we can be bound up. We can we can we can bind ourselves by not forgiving others. We can we can hold back the principles of God, the love of God, the mercy. But I don't think there's any of you out there, or myself included, that want to stop the goodness of God flowing into our lives. But simply put, there when we uh, hinder forgiveness flowing out of us. We hinder God's forgiveness, mercy, grace, and all the things that come with it from flowing into us. Let's go a little bit further and let's have a look at the Passion Translation of this to, to really show us some ideas. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 18 and we're going to have a look at verses uh, 18 and 19. So there's Matthew 18. Let's have a look for 18 and 19 and see what it says. Oh, here we go. I highlighted it. This verse about binding and loosing says, receive this truth. Come on. Come on, receive this. Receive this as we read today. Be open. Receive this truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be considered to be forbidden 
in heaven. And so there's a powerful word there that wasn't in the other translation. Whatever you forbid on earth will be considered to be forbidden in heaven. Just think about that with forgiveness. When you forbid forgiveness from flowing out of you, it's considered in heaven that forgiveness is not flowing. So it's not, it's not going to come against our will for forgiveness to be flowing into us because our will is stopping forgiveness. Let's continue. Let's keep going. So whatever you forbid on earth will be considered to be forbidden in heaven and whatever you release on earth will be considered to be released in heaven. Whatever you release on earth will be considered to be released in heaven. Again, I give you an eternal truth, another truth. If two of you, this is the same truth, again, um, you agree to ask God for something in a symphony of prayer, united, unity, intimacy, my heavenly Father will do it for you. For whoever, wherever two or three come together in harmony <laughs> of my name of my name i am right there with them and so we have a look at this and we have a look at the principles there if you read that through yourself you can pause the screen and have another read yourself today we we see this thing of what you consider on this earth. god heaven considers what you what you even if we look at the other trends if you bind on earth it's considered to be bound in heaven and so this principle here of not releasing forgiveness to others will hinder and bind up and hold us in prison where we can't receive the intimacies and the mercies of God. I'm, I'm just thinking of Joseph. If he, if he hadn't have found that place of forgiveness with his brother, brothers, if he hadn't have got to that place of understanding God's will in this whole situation, he hadn't have got to that place of, of, um, of, of, of mercy, he, he might have extracted judgment. He might have killed the, the, the brothers, the, the heads of the tribes of you know, um, Israel. We might have seen a, a catastrophe. And so we've got to understand that we've, this, this mercy and love in relationship flows. And so how do we do it? <laughs> it's impossible. We don't have the power. Well, I've been sharing with you out of Galatians 5, 16 and 17. As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of the self-life. And, you know, our self-life craves, we don't realize it, but it craves to get even. Justification. <laughs> you know, to find some sort of revenge. <laughs> it, wants to, it wants to get them back. It wants to, if you're hurt, he wants to hurt back the ones that hurt you. And a lot of times when we don't forgive, another thing, fear comes around our lives, around our hearts. You, you see that person and it's just like, argh, argh. It's like I'm caught, something's grabbed me. Where God's mercy and intimacy and freedom and liberty and, and abundant life has, has been held away from us. But the moment we forgive, it starts to pour into us and refreshes us and fills us with the water of life and fills us with the anointing and power of God to do all good things. As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you'll abandon the cravings of your self-life and see the Holy Spirit comes in and, and releases us and sets us free to forgive others, to love others. But the, the most important benefit of that is to, to receive the power of God to come and do good things in our lives. As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you'll abandon the cravings of your self-life. For your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder him from living free within you. See, our unforgiveness offends the Holy Spirit, not because he's insecure, but because he is held back, imprisoned from helping us and hinders him from living free within you. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self-life from dominating you. So let's allow the Holy Spirit's intense cravings of forgiving others, having mercy. We read about what love is. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never flat fails. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love thinks no evil of others. And so you can read through that verse again and think about who God is, the Father. And when we come into the, the Father's presence, into an intimate personal relationship with him. And we come with his heart 
unhindered. The verse in Galatians goes on to say in Galatians 5, 17, so then the two incompatible and conflicting forces forces (laughs) within you are the self-life of the flesh and the new creation life of the spirit. We want to allow the new creation life of the spirit to flood us, to fill us, to overflow us. And that's when we go back to the beginning when I talked about the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6. Let's go back there again. It says there at the beginning, whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber and be alone with Father God, praying to him in secret. Come on, let's let our prayers not be hindered. Let's not hinder the Father, Jesus or the Holy Spirit from pouring mercy out on us. Let's forgive others. Right now, I want you to think of people that you have had offence or unforgiveness towards its time. Uh, Open up to your Father right now as I pray and pray these words. Say, Father in heaven, Father in heaven, here I am in your presence. Here I am in your presence. I open up to you right now. Send me your power to forgive. I choose to forgive others. I forgive that person. I forgive those, those children, those parents, those brothers, those sisters, those people that I've been offended or hurt by. I, I forgive them now. Pour your forgiveness into me. I receive your power. I receive your mercy and your grace and your goodness. Fill my life with all good things. Thank you, Holy Spirit for your grace in Jesus name. Amen. I hope that was okay for you. Hope that was interesting for you. That was something I went through today in my personal prayer time this morning, and I wanted to share it with you. And I just encourage you, if you're enjoying these videos, if you're liking them, I, I welcome you to, 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 as you're watching, to subscribe on the button below, the capital subscribe. You can press the like button. You can, you can share with friends online. And let's get the awesome message out that people come and have a great relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Hey, I agree. You agree. Let's have a great day. Bye for now.